but uh, you have to deal with the fact that it's their baby and they've decided this and this is what they're going to do. And sometimes they will actually come to you and say, we want to do this because we made a mistake and we want to fix it. Mm -hmm. we, we, there's something in here. I mean, and you see it all the time. The anime is done, the, the, the vo voice work for the anime is done before the animation is finished usually, and quite often they will do something. You get, and you're going like, that's, you know, there'll be something like, a, there's, a, there's a, one of the shows we did, there's a whole series of fleet maneuvers in this part where the Admiral's yelling, hard to, hard to port, hard to port, and you see the entire fleet turn to starboard. And yeah, we fixed that, because that was obviously not what it was supposed to be, but what can you do? In terms of the online downloading um, and so forth, like YouTube right now, you have people, of course, are putting anime up on there, which of course is not allowed. But um, in terms of marketing, to use that to your own knowledge, do you think ADV will use the benefits of, say, the downloading industries now, like YouTube and stuff, to put online extras or try to get the fans involved? We've actually back been to their doing sites? that for a couple of years. We started using BitTorrents a couple of years ago for for releasing packages of extras and wallpapers and so on. And the technology of downloading is not necessarily a bad thing. The problem is the way it's been controlled yeah. and the fact that a lot of people just don't understand that anime, in the end, is made to make money for the company that produced it. And if someone puts it up for free on the internet, they've effectively given it away in a lot of markets and you completely destroy, especially in Asia, the markets just disappear. Uh, and piracy is always going to be a big problem, no matter what you do. But there's no reason to make it even easier. Um, as the technology improves and as more and more ways of controlling uh, the downloading uh, or the instant access of where something's gone up and pulling it back down, things will get better. But right now it's... You can only do it, it as much as you... We do what we can. We try and use the technology to our advantage okay. as much as we can. But at the same time, we have to keep telling people, you know, if you hurt the sales of the product, there won't be more product like that. So in the long term, it, it's a very destructive habit. But a lot of people just don't see it that way. So. I have a question. Uh, now, obviously, uh, when you when you bring a, an anime over to North America, there's a lot of red tape, a lot of licensing you have to go around, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what's the actual process, and like, what's the hardest part when you do that? It can be as simple as a handshake day handshake deal uh, saying we're going to do this uh, and then you start getting masters to writing very formal contracts and going back and forth between two sets of lawyers, one who speaks Japanese and English, one who speaks English and Japanese so to make sure those contracts all say exactly the same thing and it has to go through a bunch of approvals uh, it's like any other buying a product or, or a division of a company or whatever, it can get very complex and it can be very quick and it can take forever and you never really know when you start what it's going to be because there's so many... Animes aren't produced by a single company, usually. You'll usually see several names on the copyright and one of these are like production committee. You see production committee, that's actually like four or five companies, usually, all working together. And everybody in the production committee has to sign off on everything. So it, it can get very... And that's why quite often you'll see shows that, you know, everyone's saying, why aren't they out over here yet? Well, it's because... Nobody can quite decide on how they're going to handle the international sales. So. In Reynolds? Okay. I got a question. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep this going <laughs> the best way I can. Um, in terms of uh, ADV and uh, Canada actually releasing um, for TV, let's say YTV for an instance, mm -hmm. have you ever thought about um, partnership or anything like that with a Canadian television like channel in Canada to uh, show some of your uh, your TV series or anime? Sure, we thought about it. Yeah, there's a lot of weird restrictions on broadcasting in Canada. Uh, <laughs> on a series, it has to be, it's like 60 or 70 percent of everything we show has to be Canadian. And it really bogs down because when we listen to the radio at work, every, every hour we hear Avril Lavigne and it's just same song, same song, same song, and there are a fair amount of Canadian shows that are all right. But when you when you're watching YTV or whatever, it's Canadian show, Canadian show. You get your anime Canadian show, Canadian show, Canadian show. Right. Well, the you know the YTT, YTV has asked for variants, which I understand they have gotten, so they they can start showing more anime content. Uh, 
which I guess they're doing online right now or something like that. I'm not really sure. But obviously, it's something we'd like to do. Uh, up until recently, it just wasn't possible because obviously we're based in Houston. Our work is done in Houston. We've had a few shows done in Canada. Uh, but a lot of it's simply political and it's working across the border. Just getting our product into Canada okay. is tricky because we don't technically distribute directly. We go through a sub-distributor who then brings it into Canada because it works better that way. Uh, just because of the many, many, in the early days when we were selling everything direct, uh, I remember that you know you would send four packages to Canada that would be identical and one would be confiscated by customs. You'd never find out why, it just would be. Uh, so it's tricky. but. I think as time goes by, we're seeing more and more of the world kind of merge into one, one huge communications net as opposed to, oh, there's Canada and here's the UK and you know here's Australia and they all speak English, but they've all they're all separated artificially, uh, not just by uh, physical distance, but by region coding and the format of the video. And as we move more and more towards the universal type formats, that kind of stuff will become less and less of a problem. Okay. Where do you see your company in the future? And do you have any heroes or inspirations that, like, you know, when you start your company, you're like, this business person kind of inspired me and I'm going to keep going regardless of what happens? Oh, okay. Uh, taking that backwards, um, there have been a lot of people who have inspired me. I mean, obviously, my parents were huge inspirations because they supported me in this whole crazy venture. Uh, If I had to pick a couple of people who have really been inspirations, uh, Roger Corman, who's a filmmaker, uh, who produced a lot of films very inexpensively, but while some of those were not perhaps the greatest movies ever made, a lot of them have turned out to be classics. And while he was doing a lot of these exploitation movies like Death Race 2000, uh, like Piranha, and, uh, <laughs> while he was doing things like that, he was also the primary distributor in America for a lot of the classic European art films. Uh, Igmar Bergman, uh, things like The Ten Drum, uh, Kurosawa. He was distributing these things simultaneously. He actually realized that you could have a company that could be schizophrenic, which is what ADV basically is, because we do a lot of different things, and proved it could be done. And his New World Studios, while he was running it, was the most successful company in the US industry ever in terms of what they spent to how much product they put out and how they kept going. And they, the list of people who came out of his studio, this incredible list of talent is just staggering. The other person is actually here at the con. Uh, Peter Fernandez was my childhood. Uh, I didn't know who he was as a child. But looking back on it, it's like Speed Racer, the Godzilla movies, the Clint Eastwood Man with No Name movies, uh, all these things that were parts of my childhood, Galaxy Rangers, uh, Thunderbirds 2086, uh, the man had such a huge impact and no one's ever heard of him outside of anime fandom, which is sad because he's an incredible talent, but the fact that he's built this career going on for years and years doing this sort of thing and continues to create new and original things, working on original shows and doing voiceover, it's a huge inspiration. So those would be my, my I would say, my two biggest inspirations. Okay. And I'll probably think of three or four more because there's so many people, Ray Harry Hawson, you know, all of these people who are huge influences as a kid. Um, where's ADV going? My big goal, what I really am looking at right now, is the next generation of talent. Uh, Anime really got into a rut for a number of years because there was a huge creative depletion uh, as the best and the brightest fled to the video game scene because there was a lot more money. And a lot of the better creators still have not really come back into anime. Uh, one of the reasons we started investing in shows is we were really afraid they were going to stop making the kind of shows